In this video, we are going to create this search inventory component. In the future, we're going to extend this search inventory component. In this video, we are just going to make a text box and a view button so that when we click on the view button, the component will return the search condition, right? For example, if I say gas, and then when I click on the view button, the search term here, is returned back to the parent component, which is the page component, so that the parent component can then use that search term to do the next step. So let's start coding that component. First of all, I'm going to create a folder under the web applications project, and I'm going to call it controls. So we have pages and controls, right? So you can name it components if you want but I'm naming it controls. This is a terminology that I like to use. And the controls folder will contain all of the reusable components, right? And our first reusable component is the search inventory component. Again, we're gonna select the uh, razor component right here, right? And I am going to call it search inventory component. And because it is a reusable component, so it's not going to have a title here and it does not need the page directive because we do not need to navigate to this component. We are going to put this component onto a page and then we can use navigation to navigate to that page. Once the page is displayed, this component will be immediately initialized and displayed as well. So that's why we don't need the add page directive. Now, uh, I'm going to start coding the look and feel first. And if we look at the www root, this is where we keep our static resource, right? Static assets. And we are having Bootstrap as part of the Blazor application template, right? So we can use all of the classes that comes with Bootstrap. So we know that for a group of controls, right? Uh, we can use input group and we are going to have a text box and the button and for a text box we're going to use the html element input and of course it's going to be text right it's text type and um uh, we're going to use some bootstrap class uh, it's going to be form control Right? If there's nothing here, I want to display a message. That's why I need a placeholder. And I'm going to say type inventory name here to search. Right, So this is basically an instruction to the user so that the user know what to do. Okay, so I have the input control first. And now I'm going to need a button here. Right? It's going to be a button and the class is i want to have that uh, the green button look and feel right and i'm going to call it view or maybe let's call it search okay all right so with this i'm going to put it onto our inventory list page the way to do that is very simple we go to the page component and we just put it in a proper place. I'm adding a line break so that everything will look better, not too close to each other. And now I, I just start typing as I'm typing a HTML element, right? So I'm going to say search uh, inventory component. And you can see that the namespace is added. So in order to get rid of the namespace, what we can do is we can go to the imports file and this is the place that we can put all of our namespaces for this Blazor application at least. So once we import namespace here, all of the components in the in this application, right, in the Blazor application will know that the namespace is already imported. So now if I go back, I don't need to have uh, the namespace anymore and it will recognize it. See, uh, the red squiggly line is gone. And if I run the application now, let's see what happens. Okay, going to the inventory and now we can see this. 
but the button kind of looks pretty weird, right? In order to group this text box with the button and also make it look good, uh, we are going to add some other classes here, which we are going to call input group text. So with this, I'm going to click on the hot reload button. Going back to here, you can see that the text box and the button is connected. And we're seeing this rounded corner on the right hand side. And there's no running rounded corner on the left hand side. So this is what I want in terms of look and feel. Now let's continue the coding. What I want to do now is basically when we click on the search button here, we will need to get the user input from the input box and then return that back to the parent component, which is the inventory list component. How do we do that? First of all, we will need to collect the input from the input box, right? In the past, if you do that with JavaScript, you will need to hook up an event handler in the button and then uh, you will need to get the input element and then get the value of the input element. So that's a manual process. In a single page application frameworks, whether it's Blazor or any other single page application frameworks, there is this concept of data binding. Here in this video, we are going to use two-way data binding to retrieve the data directly. For that, we will need a variable to bind with the input control here, right? The input element. So we're going to say private and then uh, it's going to be a string, right? And what is the name of the variable? We can name it after inventory uh, name to search because this is done at six. So I'm going to initialize it with empty string here. So this will be bound to this. And the way to do that is to come over here and and say that at sign bind value and then we can just put this inventory name to search here now whenever the user input anything in the input box the value will automatically be stored in this variable right in order to see what's in there we can add another thing here Right, so add a line break and then we can just put inventory name to search. So we put it here in order to display it. And then I'll explain to you the different types of data binding. Okay, so I'm going to click on this hot reload button, uh, but it complains that, well, I got to do the rebuild. And then we go back to here. Now, if I type A, B, C, nothing is happening. But it's as soon as I tap out or click out. So let me click out. You can see that the variable value is displayed right here. Right. And if I add something and click out or tap out, you can see that the value is again reflected. If I delete some letters, still when I click out, it's reflected. So here we're seeing two types of data binding, right? Let's go back to our code. The input control, first of all, is bound to this variable. And this is whenever we have the value here, it's going to be displayed inside the input box. And whenever user make any changes, this variable is also going to store the new value. So this is a two way data binding, right? It goes back and forth to the input box and back to the variable. Now here, when we display the value, this is a one way data binding that's also called string interpolation. So we are having this variable and the value is displayed one way to the front end. So this is one way data binding. Now we don't need this variable to, to be displayed here. I'm just going to delete everything here. The next step, is that when we click on this button, we will need to pass the user input out to the parent control. And to do that, we will need to create a special parameter that is called event callback, right? So I'm going to create a property. The type of the property is event callback. And because we need to pass back the 
value we will specify the value type here and then here we can say on search inventory and now what we can do is we can react to the buttons click event by saying at sign on click and then we can say on search and then we can add a method here you can say on search when we click on this button this on search event handler will be triggered and when it is triggered what we need to do is we just need to grab this information and call this event callback so we can do like this on search inventory and then invoke async here we just need to specify what we want to pass back because this has a two-way data binding so this inventory name to search variable will always have the newest value from the input so i can just call this invoke async to pass this information back to the parent control now this event callback is different from action delegate if this is a delegate you will have to test whether it is now or not right only when it is not now are you able to call this but because event callback is not a delegate so you can directly invoke this event callback without testing whether it's now or not so now when the search button is clicked this event handler is triggered and then we're triggering this event callback to pass the search term back to the parent control now let's go back to our parent control here in the inventory list and let's see whether we can find that event callback i press the space bar expecting to see everything that is exposed from this control but i can't find any why is that because when we go back to the control this property is not exposed yet so in order to expose this uh, as a parameter for the component we need to annotate it with parameter attribute now when we come over here I'm pressing on spacebar i can see the first one is on search inventory so i can just take this as an event and i can say on inventory search and then here i'm just going to create this on inventory search event handler here we we'll need to provide a parameter to receive the search term so i'm gonna give a parameter and call it search term so for testing purpose i'm going to create a variable in order to receive the search term right and i'm gonna call this i'm gonna assign the search term to this search term inside uh, the inventory list component in order to make sure that we actually received the search term from the search inventory component uh, i'm going to say search term is and search term search term is search term and we're going to initialize this with empty string that's it and we're going to click on how reload and going back here all right so we already see search term here after i typed letters and click on the search button i can see the search term is displayed here right uh, if i delete everything and click on search button i can see that everything is cleared and if i type something else click on the search button again i can see this so our event handler here is successfully triggered and then the invocation of the event callback is also triggered and also it also proves that event handler that handles the event callback is also working right and then it also proves that our one-way data binding is working too